Hello and welcome back to Oso oh Retro and also to a massive pile of boxes. And that means that this is going to be an unboxing video. The first unboxing video actually that I'm doing on this channel. So if this goes well and if you guys enjoy this sort of content then maybe we can do more of this sort of thing in the future. Now all of these boxes were sent to me by a viewer, um, John Grobla from Cape Town. And I'd just like to send a massive shout out to John for sending me all this awesome stuff to unbox on the channel. Um, I know there's some pretty great stuff in here, so it's going to be a pretty good video, I think. Now, there is one thing that unfortunately I do have to apologize for, and that is the audio quality in the rest of this video. Unfortunately, while recording this video, I had a microphone malfunction and it ended up using the inbuilt microphone for my camera and not the external mic. So the audio is pretty bad, I'm afraid. I thought about re-recording the whole video, but that would be a bit disingenuous because the whole point of an unboxing video is to see the reaction and, um, you know, to get a sort of authentic experience as to what it was like to actually unbox these things so to redo it would kind of ruin that i think so i'm afraid the audio in this is going to be pretty bad um there's nothing i can really do about it i'm really sorry um i'll have to just try and fix it obviously for the next video but anyway with that out the way let's get into it all right so the first box i'm going to open is this big one it's always a good idea to start with the biggest box first and we have a commodore tape player all right so these are obviously um, designed for uh, recording and playing back information to your Commodore. Um, I do already have one of these, uh, but it isn't a Commodore branded one. The one I've got is just an off the shelf sort of uh, generic uh, player. So this is actually a really nice one to have. Uh, this one seems to be in pretty good condition. Seems to work fine for the most part. Uh, all the play buttons and everything else works, that's great. It's a bit yellowed, so maybe it might be in need of some retro writing, but yeah, it's a pretty good find actually. Um, I'm glad to finally get an original Commodore one to go with my uh, Commodore instead of the generic one. All right, next we have, oh, a game. Now, this is pretty special. This is SimCity uh, in box, of course. Uh, you might have noticed in some of my other videos that I do have... Uh, SimCity 2 and 3000 in box, but I've never had an original uh, SimCity 1 in box. Now, this box is a bit rough, as I'm sure you can see, but, uh, you know, it tells a story. It's obviously been used or abused, depending on which way you look at it, and so it's not perfect. I mean, I'm all for excellent condition game boxes that look like they've just come off the shelf, but I also really like these old ones that are a bit uh, ratty and you know, um, ratty around the edges because it, you know, at least it shows that it's been used. So inside we've got the SimCity all-time high score sheet. I suppose that's something that you meant to, I don't know, try and beat maybe. I don't know what that's all about. Uh, a user manual. This is in black and white, nothing too amazing, but uh, still pretty cool. And then you've got your two SimCity discs. Um, it comes on two discs. What are these? Uh, one point two megs i presume doesn't actually say uh but yeah so that's that's brilliant it, it's uh, an original copy of SimCity, which i've been looking for for quite some time so i'm really chuffed to finally have that to add to my SimCity collection all right next we have oh my okay pray for death uh she's quite a, a sturdy girl isn't she mm, yes uh this is a fighting game i believe i have never heard of it don't know anything about it. Uh, it's from 1996, Virgin Interactive. Looks like maybe a sort of Mortal Kombat-ish clone. But uh, yeah, still sealed, really good condition. Um, I probably won't ever open this or play it, but uh, still very cool to have that added to my big box game collection. Next, uh, Seven Kingdoms, the Freethan Fr Fr Wars? Yeah, let's go with that. All right, Freethan Fr Wars. Yeah, brilliant. That sounds good. Uh, Ubisoft, published by Ubisoft. It's a strategy game of some description. Uh, looks a bit like a city builder, maybe. I also have no idea what this is. Um, campaign generator, 16-bit color. It's always good. 1999. Okay, so that's certainly something I can try out. I think it's probably for Pentium. What is this? Yeah, Pentium 1 game. So that's something I can definitely 
play around with on my Pentium 1. Uh, what else do we have next is, all right, okay, so we got Light and Darkness, The Prophecy. Now, this is a game that I've been looking for for a while. Um, I'm actually just been looking for the box mostly. I'm not overly interested in the game itself. I just really like this sort of artwork on the front of the box. I think it's quite cool. Um, look, this is a point and click adventure game in the kind of uh, style of Myst, I think. All the scenes are sort of pre-rendered, um, unlike LucasArts adventure games, which are all sort of hand-drawn artwork. This is all uh, computer-generated, pre-rendered sort of stuff. But um, yeah, pretty interesting. I like the box, I'm, so I'm glad to have it for that. Uh, not, sure, not sure if I'll ever play it, but it is certainly a very cool thing to have. All right, the next thing we've got is another Commodore tape player. Uh, let's go ahead and unwrap this. Now this one is certainly in better cosmetic condition than the other one. Uh, although, yes, appears to be an issue with the buttons. I'm not sure what's going on there. All right, but it certainly is in better cosmetic condition. Um, it's really nice to have as maybe a spare. Uh, I think that one will probably work better than this one, but still, it's always good to have two, always good to have two of everything, as someone once told me, so that you have a spare. All right, uh, next is Flight Unlimited. Okay, this is a pretty interesting game for me, actually, because this game is one of the first games, or one of the games, shall we say, to support the rendition Verite graphics um, accelerator. Now... Um, I will be doing a video on that Rendition Verite uh, Accelerator uh, soon, hopefully. And so I've been looking for games that I can play on it. And this is one of the games that does actually support it. Um, having said that, I'm not sure if I'm going to actually use this game because I do have quite a few games already. So I'll see if I actually use it or not. But uh, it is still pretty cool to have this. Uh, this wasn't a very good flight sim at the time, as far as I know. There was certainly were better flight sims out there but at least this one is in pretty decent condition it's got a bit of damage so it's been abused a little bit but at least it's still sealed so that's very cool so i shall definitely be happy to add that to my big box collection uh what's next all oh, right black and white yes now this is a game that i did play quite a lot also back in the day it's a strategy game um sort of had a original uh sort of gameplay mechanic, I suppose, where um, instead of controlling the villagers directly, you had a creature that you would that you would build and then he would sort of run around and, and do stuff. Um, it, was, it looked very good for the time. It looked absolutely gorgeous. It was quite a system breaker as well, as far as I remember. Um, it was very hyped. It was a lot of hype surrounding this game, but it didn't really live up to that. Um, it's still, it was still fun though, I still really enjoyed it, but it just wasn't quite as good as I suppose they were hoping it would have been. But still, I'm really glad to add that to my collection as well. Um, next game we've got, Casino Empire, Build It, Run It, Rule It, by Sierra, or at least it's published by Sierra. Um, basically, as you can see, it's a game where you build casinos. Looks a bit like The Sims, uh, sort of that isometric overhead view uh, but I've never really heard of this or seen anything it might be something fun to play later on uh, it's a Pentium 2 game so once I get a Pentium 2 going will that fit there yes it will just once we get a Pentium 2 going I can certainly play that that's quite cool all right next all right we've got a SVI Spectra video quick shot joystick controller in box which is very, very nice. Uh, ah, well, actually, I say that, but uh, this one, <laughs> all right, this one appears to be, yes, this one is uh, some assembly required. It's in, it's in pieces. So it was either dismantled because there's something wrong with it or for some other reason. I have no idea why. But I think we'll keep this one maybe as spares. Uh, at, least I, at least it comes in its original box, which is nice. So... That's something, but that's certainly going to be filed away under future project uh, category. What about this one? Here we go. Now we got another one, a quick shot joystick. Um, slightly different box, actually. It doesn't say SVI or doesn't say quick shot one. 
So maybe it's a slightly earlier one, I'm not sure, but anyway, it's still pretty cool. It's in its box, and this one is very nice condition, actually. I do have a few of these already, but they're nowhere near as nice as this one. This is a really good one. This one looks as though it's been hardly used, and also it's obviously in its original box, which is always a nice find. I haven't seen many in their original box, so that's quite cool. Um, so, yeah. I'm definitely quite pleased to get that in its original box. What else have we got? Right, oh, now we've got a bit of a Age of Empires theme here, appears. Oh, well, okay, yeah, we've got a lot of, a lot of Age of Empires stuff here. Okay, so the first thing that I'm pretty excited about is Age of Empires 1. I've been looking for a big box copy of this for a while. It's definitely one of those games that I want to replay Again, um, I haven't played it for like 20 years since the late 90s, early 2000s. Um, I've been waiting to get an original big box version to play it because I just like to have the original game when I play it. You can easily find it online these days, but it's just, you know, there's just something about having that original sort of big box and manuals and all that to play along with it. So I'm glad to finally get that. Then there's a Age of Empires, uh, it looks like an official strategy guide by Microsoft uh, Press. So these were quite common uh, back in the day. For strategy games, you would get a, a strategy guide, which would tell you how to win you know, each mission and how to, you know, a whole bunch of different strategies you can try and use and hints and all that kind of thing. Um, I never actually bought these back in the day, um, but I'm certainly glad to have this one now. I could perhaps even use it when I play through Age of Empires 1. So maybe this will actually help me. So yeah, this one looks to be in very good condition, so I'm pretty glad to get that. Uh, and what else have we got here? I think we've got, yes, all right, we've got the Rise of Rome expansion here for Age of Empires 1. So that's basically just an expansion pack to that Age of Empires, you know, standard thing. Um, these were the days when expansion packs were actually substantial. You got new campaigns and new units and, you know, quite a lot of new content. Um, and it came in its own box, of course. It was a whole, it was almost a whole new game, although it did require the original Age of Empires to play. But this is this is also very cool. I do have an original CD of this lying around, but I've also been looking around for the big box version. So I'm glad to finally get that to go with my Age of Empires collection. Uh, speaking of which, we've got a nice. Okay, we've got Age of Empires two, uh, Age of Kings. This box is a little bit broken. It can, it can be few repaired, I reckon, pretty easily. So this is this is just the, the sequel, obviously, to Age of Empires 1. Mostly more of the same, but just a little bit better. Um, I don't, don't really know what else to say about it. Um, I do actually have this already in, in big box form. Uh, and this one's a little bit worse than my version, so I might actually just sell this one. Um, like repair it and then sell it, but still. It's always good to have a spare of everything, so... That's a nice spare that I might or might not keep. Then we've got Age of Empires, the Conquerors expansion. Now, this is for Age of Empires 2 expansion pack, of course. Really nice one, this. It's unopened, mint condition box, absolutely perfect. And I won't have to open this, luckily, because I do have an original CD for this as well, um, spare. So this one can certainly stay sealed. And also, what I got today was this Age of Empires Conquerors expansion manual. So I don't really need to open that box at all because I've, can, I've got another CD and, and I've got another spare manual. So I can play through this without having to interfere with that nice sealed box at all. This manual actually has Age of Empires 2 as well on the side of it. So that's on, on the one side, of course, and then on the other side, upside down, you've got the expansion. So that's a cool little a uh, thing to read through while playing Age of Empires. Right, uh, what else have I got? All oh, right, okay, this is pretty interesting as well. Combat Links, air-to-ground battle simulator for the Commodore 64 with this awesome artwork on the front cover, hand-drawn, sort of hand-painted of a Lynx because you wouldn't use real screenshots, of course, because the game looked pretty rubbish back in the day. So, but uh, this is a very nice one. It's in, it's in good condition. It, as you can see, it comes on a tape, which is why you need your Commodore tape player there to play this, or, well, or to load it more, more accurately. Uh, so you just type load combat there to get it going. It comes with this little booklet. 
It's very cool with all your keys and whatnot. Very funky. Um, this one's in very nice nick, and I'm really glad actually to get this because I don't have many Commodore 64 games, especially not in this size, um, in this format as it were, you know, um, and this is very, very nice condition as well. So yeah, that's really, really cool stuff. I'm going to put that there. Right, next, oh, we've got another quick shot joystick controller. Oh, wow. All right. Let's hope this one's a bit better than the first one. Yes, it is. Okay. So this one is also in very good condition. Really nice. Hardly used again. I think whoever these came from uh, virtually never used them. We've got another thing in here. It's like an advertisement. What is this? Yeah, it's like an advertisement for all their different products. Uh, the quick shot two, three, and one number one. So, yeah, that's quite funky, huh? All this nice 1980s advertising. It's really cool. It tells you what games you can play it on and all that. 1984. Brilliant. It's a nice little extra to have with your uh, quick shot Spectro video, SVI. Well, this one, actually, I don't know if this one says, yes, no, it does say Spectro video. Okay. So, yeah, Spectro video joysticks. All right, next we have, oh yes, okay, Dungeon Keeper 2. This is a great game. Um, or at least the first one I remember being a fantastic game. I played this a lot. Um, and I think there might even be a remastered version of that out. Um, so if you want to play it, maybe you should try and get that version. Whatever you do, don't play the mobile version. The mobile version I've heard is a complete piece of junk. And uh, it's got nothing to do really with the original games. But number one and two were very, very good. Um, this one is 3D Accelerated, which is very cool as well. So this might be much easier to play uh, today than the old uh, number one in software mode. But uh, I think it's very similar to number one at least. But it's a very, very cool game. Um, I really want to play this again as well at some point. So, and it looks like I can play it on a Pentium 1 as well. So it's another good game to try on the wood grain Pentium. All right, what's next? Okay, yes, all right, Homeworld. Well, Homeworld is one of my all-time favorite games, really. Um, this was the first, the first that I know, a full 3D real-time strategy game. Um, and in theory, you could go in all directions. So you could use X, Y, and Z axis, uh, axis at least. So you can go up, down, every which way you want. In practice, you didn't actually do that. You basically were... Uh, you were still pretty much constrained to the X and Y axis like any other uh, strategy game, but at least you did have the option to go sort of straight up if you wanted to, but you never really had to do that. But the main thing about this game was just the way that it looked at the time. It's um, fully 3D accelerated, so it ran on a whole bunch of 3D accelerator cards. Obviously, I think I played this on my Voodoo 2, and I was really, really, really pleased with it back in the day. Um, and uh, it's got an amazing story as well. It's kind of like the story to Battlestar Galactica in a way, but it's just really, it's just, it's just really good. I mean, I can't say enough nice things about Homeworld, to be honest. I played it again recently. Uh, there's a re-release, uh, I mean, a remastered version, basically, that came out about five years ago. So if you haven't played this, then I highly recommend you play the remaster, because that's a very good um, way to experience it. They haven't screwed around with the the story or the gameplay or done anything stupid like that uh, all they've done is just improved the graphics and made it look really good and a couple of other sort of um you know like improvements to the interface and and those kind of things just to make it a bit easier to play on modern systems but yeah this is a really great game okay commandos yes now commandos was a very interesting game i also played this a lot back in the day you basically run around with a squad of commandos. Um, it's very sort of stealth oriented. Um, it's set in World War Two, obviously. So the whole idea is, of course, to you know to avoid being seen by the enemy and to sort of like snipe them and and remove them without them noticing. You know that kind of thing. Um, it's quite hard, as I recall, but uh, it was still good fun. I'd love to try this one again, which is so I'm really glad to have that. And then we've got the uh, expansion pack, I think, basically for it. Although it's a, it's a standalone game, but I think it's pretty much just extra content for uh, Commandos uh, 1. And so, yeah, that's that's always good. It's got some new features and weapons and whatever, blah, blah, blah. But, yeah, 
Very nice. Right, next we've got Ripper. Six CDs. Ooh, the technological event of the year. Starring Christopher Walken. Oh, okay, interesting. And John Rhys Davies. Oh, there's old Christopher Walken right there. Oh, brilliant. Okay, so this is like a full motion video, live action kind of, uh, probably adventure game, I suppose. Uh, it looks quite horror oriented again there, but um, yeah, it should certainly be a good uh, a good thing to try out. I, I never really played these games back in the day. This is kind of like Phantasmagoria. Um, it's the same idea. It's got lots of CDs, lots of video on it. It's all full motion um you know alternative endings blah 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 but uh it's something i never really played around with back in the day but i should perhaps try them because i've you know perhaps i'm missing out on something interesting so that's one i've never heard of here's another one i've never heard of uh, gangsters organized crime by idos interactive uh this is a strategy looking game um set in the 1920s uh, it kind of gives me XCOM vibes with that sort of picture there. I don't know. Um, you, it seems like you have a little squad of guys and you have to go around and complete missions and, you know, you, they get experience and blah, blah, blah. That's just what it looks like. Um, I might be completely wrong about it, of course, but, uh, you know, uh, interesting. An interesting game. Never heard of it. Might be fun to play. All right, now some other little things, some more modern games here. We've got Microsoft Flight Simulator by Softkey. Windows 9598. Uh, this looks like a re-release of Windows of a Microsoft Flight Simulator, maybe. Doesn't look like the original one, but uh, it's quite difficult to see there which version of Flight Sim this is. I don't think it's Flight Sim 98. It might be the one before that, but anyway. I'm a big fan of Flatson, so that's always very cool to have. My original disc. Uh, pinball Mania. Realistic pinball action for your PC. I never really played many pinball games. I don't know, it just wasn't, didn't have much of an appeal to me. But they are actually pretty fun, so maybe there's something I should try again. Um, 386 SX 33 megahertz processor required. I think we can manage that. In fact, I do actually have a 386 that I could play this on, so that would be brilliant. It's a future, well, perhaps not a video, but at least something to do. Uh, Microsoft Golf. All right, okay. I'm not a fan of golf in any way, shape, or form, so I'm probably not going to be playing this, but I'll add it to the Microsoft software collection. Now, Baldur's Gate Enhanced Edition. Yes, this is pretty cool as well. It's a much more modern game, so it doesn't really fit on this channel. It's not exactly retro, but... It is a remaster, I suppose. It's from 2014. So this is Baldur's Gate and its expansion pack, all sort of remastered and put onto one. Oh, it's got, yeah, it's got expansion pack and it's got new content, I think. Um, I don't know how well it's been done um, as a remaster. They quite often screw these things up. Just have a look at the Warcraft 3 uh, remaster, for example, but this hopefully isn't that. And it might be a good way to experience Baldur's Gate on your modern PC. I generally don't do that. I generally prefer to play games on the original hardware with the original versions, if at all possible. But it might just be something to experiment with at one time in the future. Okay, now I've got some more stuff here that's a little bit more modern. Uh, this is Mist uh, Uru, I suppose you pronounce it like that. Um, you can see immediately this is a later game. It comes in a smaller box. No longer has, um, you know, it's no longer in the big box that you used to get in the 90s. This is, this I think is uh, number four in the Myst series as far as I know. Uh, it's again just a similar sort of uh, point and click adventure game in the line of Myst. Uh, I was never really a fan of Myst, so I probably am not going to be playing this anytime soon. But still, it's a nice box, so... It's pretty cool to have. Uh, is that going to stay? Yes, it is. Uh, Empire Earth 2 next. All right. So this is a Age of Empires kind of thing, I think. It's like a strategy game, but you advance through the ages. Um, you start out in ancient times or whatever, and you can go, you know, all the way up to the modern day and then to, I think, even to, like, space and, you know, the future kind of thing like that. So 
pretty interesting. Um, I've heard of it, but I've never played it, so that's definitely on the future playlist. I'm quite keen to try that one. Oh yes, Fear. Fear is very, very cool. I did play this quite a bit. This was like a horror first-person shooter game back in the day. Um, very atmospheric, had a lot of sort of supernatural elements to it. Uh, it was very sort of, I suppose scary is a good word for it, but you know, a lot of, you know, it was supposed to be frightening and um, a lot of blood and a lot of gore and that kind of stuff. So very interesting game. I think it was based on the Doom 3 engine. Um, I'm not entirely sure about that, but it certainly looks like Doom 3's engine in these pictures. And uh, But again, this is 2005, so it's, it's a smaller big box, if that makes any sense. It's kind of a contradiction, but you know what I mean. All right, and Company of Heroes, all right, 2006, I think, yes, 2006. Uh, yeah, also a sort of squad-based strategy game, a lot more modern. Um, this doesn't really fit into the channel, I suppose, but uh, it certainly is a nice thing to have if I ever want to replay uh, Company of Heroes again. All right, now these two I'm especially uh, keen on and quite excited about. These are, as you can obviously see, StarCraft and StarCraft Brood War in big box format. Now, I am a massive StarCraft fan, and I played this game so much. I played it at the lands back in the day. I've probably played through the single player campaign like 10 times. Um, I'm actually replaying um, the expansion now as we speak on, on my Pentium 1 system, but I also replayed the campaign in the remastered version, uh, which was released about five years ago or so. If you haven't played StarCraft, then I highly recommend you do play the remaster. They haven't screwed with anything, they haven't messed up the gameplay again, but they've at least just modernized the graphics and added a few other little improvements to make the, uh, the game more enjoyable to play. And that's certainly um, certainly worth playing today. Um, but I'm very, very happy to finally get my hands on an original big box copy. And these are fantastic big boxes, by the way. Just look at these brilliant graphics and screenshots on the back and these these sort of opening, you know, the way the front, <laughs> this thing opens in the front and you can see all the, see everything you basically need to see about the game. And um, this is also from a time when expansion packs were like, you know, were real, real sort of quality content. You got new units, you got three new campaigns, I think, with this. You got, uh, you know, a lot of extra content for your hard-earned cash, which was quite expensive, I think, 250 Rand for an expansion pack which is quite a lot of money for uh, expansion back, back back in the day. But I must admit that um, I'm slightly embarrassed to admit that my copies of StarCraft were always pirated. So at least now I've made amends and I've bought the originals. And so now I can play StarCraft in peace without having to worry about pirated content at least. All right, and now the next thing in the book. Ah, oh, honestly, no. Nugget. Naughty nugget. How did you get in there? What are you doing in my game box? Right, well, anyway, um, <clears throat> the next thing is uh, Alien Trilogy. Wow, okay, so this is this is a DOS product. Brilliant. That's what we like to hear. So this is obviously a Aliens game based on the Alien franchise, um, of which I was a massive fan, especially Alien 1 and 2. Not so much any of the others, but um, this is, it's basically a first person shooter. Uh, it's based on something that's similar to the Doom engine. I don't know if it is a Doom engine, but it looks quite similar to the Doom engine. It was released in 1996, about the same time as Quake. And um, I don't remember an awful lot about this, except that it was bloody difficult. Your weapons were pretty much useless and the aliens moved at an incredibly fast pace, obviously. So this game is pretty brutal. But uh, still, it could definitely be a good candidate for a revisit at some point in the future. It requires a 486DX2, alright, so I can play this on the Ace of Power that I've got lying around. So yeah, there we go, that's pretty much all the games in this box. Oh wait, there's one other thing, there's a nice manual here for Caesar 3. Uh, again, I've got an original Caesar 3 somewhere, so having this manual to read along and while I play the game is pretty cool. So all in all, that's really great, all these games. I'm really happy with this. It's, it's a pretty good haul, I'd say, of, of games. 
but there's still more stuff to open so let's carry on with the next box all right let's have a look at this other box it's a smaller box this time let's see what goodies we have in here oh it's also exciting opening boxes isn't it right uh, bubble wrap yay cool seawolf for the commodore 64 very cool a commodore 64 game seawolf i'm not entirely sure which one it is uh oh space pilot oh this is brilliant look at this you've got a harrier a spitfire what looks like a swordfish i think it's a swordfish and some obviously space pilot i suppose is what where the game name comes from also it's a commodore 64 game obviously 1980, 1984 uh, again an original cassette tape very funky does it actually have the tape oh yes it's in good nick lovely condition brilliant that's very nice very very nice you never have enough commodore 64 games especially ones in the original packaging uh, commodore 64 side one saboteur Side to Turbo Esprit, huh? That must be a car driving game named after the Lotus Esprit Turbo, I presume. Uh, Combat Links, oh, that's probably that other game we saw earlier with the helicopters. Uh, and Critical Mass, sure. Nice, original Commodore. Manufactured under license by Microsoft distributors. Distributors, sure. Hmm. Did not know Microsoft distributors were well, distributing Commodore 64 games. Learn something new every day. What else have we got? Oh, yes, here we go. This is looking very... <laughs> Tape to disc transfer utility for Commodore 64. So, yeah, it's pretty self-explanatory. Something to transfer your tapes to your disc. Cool, very handy. Uh, High Noon by Ocean Software. Again, with the awesome sort of hand-drawn cartoony artwork on the front. Very funky. Stop saying funky. I need a new word instead of funky. If you would like to leave a comment and let me know what word I should use instead of funky in future videos, then please do that. Uh, high Noon, Commodore, yes, all right. So it's got the tape. It's got a little manual sort of thing. Oh, it's actually not bad at all. Shoot first, ask questions later. Yeah, that's pretty much the motto we live by here in South Africa. So yeah, we can, I can certainly understand that. Uh, turn the page for a new wave of new games. Oh, wow. Hunchback 2, Quasimodo's Revenge. Kick ass. Very nice. Lovely. I love the, the packaging, the original box. It's all great stuff. Next, Crazy Kong. In Interceptor Software. 22.55 again those prices man sure i wish you could get anything for 22.55 today suitable for the commodore 64 so uh, was it does that mean it was specifically designed for it or it's just suitable for it i'm not entirely sure what that means uh to hold on shift around blah 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 controls the plot king kong has gone mad and captured your girlfriend ah yes well that's the that's the old plot isn't it of pretty much every 1980s game involving monkeys or King Kongs. Uh, Interceptor. Oh, look at this cool artwork on the tape. That's brilliant. That is so 1980s. I love it. Cool. So thanks a lot, John, for that. Very nice stuff. More video game. Early game consoles or microcomputers, I suppose you'd call them. Star Voyager for use for the Atari video games. Okay, cool. Nice little cartridge there. Star Voyager. Superstar cassette program system teleplay radio entertainment unit. Okay, I don't think I have one of these systems. Um, okay, let's see. perhaps this this doesn't seem to be the same. Unless I'm missing something, it doesn't seem to be the same game for the same uh, the same box. This is called Tank Battle, but uh, yeah. So there's a. A cartridge for the teleplay video game video entertainment system maybe I'll get one of those in the future and then I can actually play around with that uh, what else space mission video game cartridge Ooh, okay some nice pictures there again 
wish I could make these into like a wall poster and stick them up on my wall. Uh, for Tidlex Home Arcade. Cartridge number nine, okay. Nice, Space Mission and Planet Patrol for the Atari. Oh, there we go. That can, I can keep that with my new Atari that I got recently. Try play that. Uh, what have we got here? Now we got more, looks like spare parts. Well, it's a joystick, but uh, it's in a bit of a rough shape. But maybe it's repairable. I can perhaps use some of the other parts from that other joystick from earlier to rebuild that. So let's have a look. Ooh, a bunch of Atari games. Air Sea Battle. Combat. I think I do have combat already. It's quite a common one. Uh, Baggammon. Cool stuff. And that's it. Air Sea Battle again. All right. So nice Atari games there. Uh, paddles, oh yes, Atari paddles. Also, these look to be in very good condition. You can never have too many of these. Uh, I think I've got two already, so, but these are also very nice to have a, a spare of. You should always have a spare of everything, apparently. What else? Console games, Atari. Ah, Miss Pac-Man, yes, the old favorite, the old classic of Miss Pac-Man. Gangster's Alley, that's the same game as we had earlier, I think, isn't it? Or was that High Noon? Uh, I'm sure we had a, I'm sure we had this earlier, or perhaps not, anyway. Oh no, that was the other game I think, no, never mind. Uh, fun with numbers, hmm, okay, random problems. Yes, we've all got those, haven't we? Uh, tapeworm. Cool, and Miss Pac-Man again, right. Cool, well, there we go, that's that box. Let's get another one. So this appears to be a keyboard, just by looking at it, and looking at the box, of course. It's not gonna be this keyboard, but it's probably going to be a keyboard. If I can just figure out how to open it. Oh, this box appears to be childproof. I can't open it. Aha! Aha! I think we're in business. Yes! Yes, Pinky, yes. Okay. That, yes, yes, ah, compact. Ah, yes, right, now this. Mm. This is a compact keyboard that will go very nicely with, I think I've got a compact uh, PC in one of these other boxes. So this is a nice keyboard to match that PC, but seeing as we haven't seen that PC yet, I'm just gonna put that out the way for now. And the box is just the box. Next box. Let us have a look. What have we got here? We've got foam. Sweet. And packing material. Ah, good. More games. Ooh, Rambo 3. Oh, brilliant. For the Commodore 64 or 128. Great stuff. There's old Sly on the box. He is back and this time he's taking no prisoners. Oh, awesome. Awesome stuff. Gotta love Rambo. Uh, nice tape, manual, everything. It's, looks to be pretty good condition. So yeah, brilliant. More Commodore 64. More Commodore 64 is good Commodore 64. Bangkok Knights. Uh, what is, uh, it's like a fighting game for, um, yeah, okay. It's like a early-ish fighting game for the Commodore 64. Actual C64 screens. If you can see that, if my phone will focus. Please focus, oh, there we go. Actual screenshots. Kind of brings back unreal memories. Um, yeah, so that's very cool. Commodore 64 again, oh, two discs. I mean, tapes. Sure, this game must be quite luxury. 
two tapes. Must be fancy. Ooh, Renegade 3, final chapter. Looks like a really cheesy 1980s kung fu movie. Which is a good thing. That's exactly what you want. Uh, Renegade 2, final chapter. Uh, some more actual Commodore 64 screens there. Funky. All right, now this is getting interesting. Spectra video cartridge. And ah, yes, now this is a pretty interesting and I believe rare, if I can unpack it, that is, rare thing. This is a Spectra video keyboard attachment for the Atari 2600. So the idea, of course, being that you plug this cartridge into your Atari 2600 and that you can then use this keyboard um, because obviously the standard Atari 2600 doesn't have any keys or anything on it it's just to control via joystick so this is this is a very cool little accessory I must actually look into this a lot more and maybe play with it and maybe even do a video specifically on this because I think this is a pretty rare thing um, especially in working condition which I believe this one is so yeah that's a really really nice find so thank you again to John for sending this to me um, I can't actually wait to play with that a bit, a bit later bubble wrap for Africa right oh and here is the Atari 2600 so I can just show you here actually can see that this sort of goes it's kind of hard to do this on camera but yeah so that sort of fits on top of it there like that and then you put your cartridge in I think there like that or whatever and then you can use this keyboard with your Atari 2600 programs I don't know offhand which programs actually supported this um, but I imagine there were a bunch of sort of productivity software uh, things that you could use on your Atari 2600, which pretty much turned this into a microcomputer like, you know, like the Commodore 64 or the Spectrum or the BBC Micro or, you know, um, the Acorn machines, that kind of thing. So I think this is quite a unique and rare little piece of uh, hardware, which is very funky and very nice to have. So thank you to John for sending that to me again. Okay, packing material. Nothing there. What have we got here? It's like Christmas, except it's February. Right, ah yes, this. Okay. This is a microvision. Now, this is one of the first game consoles, handheld consoles. Uh, pretty much ever I think it's probably from 1970 and I think it's I'll, I'll put it up on the screen just to make sure that my numbers are up but I think it's 1979 it's a very early console and what's quite interesting about this obviously is that it takes two 9 volt batteries which is quite a lot of power for a console but also this thing in order to change the cartridge you have to remove the whole thing like this but the the actual processor is in this cartridge as are the buttons and the screen so what you would do every single time that you would change the game is you'd actually be changing the whole the whole processor and the whole, you know a significant portion of the hardware the only thing that stays the same really is uh is the screen i see the screen is a little bit um, damaged. I don't know if this is even in working condition, unfortunately, anymore. But um, it might still work. You just won't be able to see it very well, which is a bit of a pity. But yeah, these microvisions are are pretty pretty rare and uh, quite interesting. There's actually a video um, I was watching on YouTube about this, which I'll link below as well for those who are more interested. Um, it wasn't a very good console, it seems. Or handheld, not console. I must stop calling it a console. Uh, it wasn't a very good handheld system. Um, you know, it had these problems where the screen wouldn't last very long. And I think it also had something to do with uh, electro electrostatic discharge. And you could easily 
you could easily destroy some of the um, hardware inside if you inserted the cartridge the wrong way or not you know um, that kind of thing but but still it's a very very interesting thing to have um, it only comes with this one game unfortunately this is looks like the German version of connect 4 because um, this should say connect 4 on it looks like it's in German or Dutch maybe so that's pretty interesting but yeah okay that's a very very interesting find that is um, I'll see if I can make this work let's just see if I turn it on what does it do nothing yeah the batteries might be flat all right we shall check that out later and finally Ooh, okay, here's the box for the uh, microvision. It definitely looks like it's in German. Oh, there's another game here. Okay, that's cool. Oh, there's a few games. Oh, brilliant. Oh, okay, this is this is very cool actually. Now, all right, so we've got uh, whatever this is. Looks like the label's fallen off. Uh, oh, that is, according to this here manual, that is Shooting Star. So there we go, we've got Shooting Star, we've got Blockbuster, and we've got Macro, Microvision, I mustn't call it Macrovision, Microvision Bowling. And then here's a spare button that looks like it's broken off one of the games, probably the red one, yeah, 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 there we go. The red one, the red game, uh, Shooting Star is missing a button, but that can probably be remedied. So yeah, there's some more games for the Microvision. So it's a very interesting cons uh, handheld little, um, a machine this very interesting it's all in that other language of course but uh, you can't help that so yeah brilliant that's um, I'm very happy to have found out they these are supposedly and apparently quite rare and hard to get hold of these days so it's uh, slightly unfortunate that the screen is a bit damaged but uh, you know you can't have everything right the next thing I've got here yeah, is pretty interesting Now this is a flight case, obviously, but it's not. It's what's inside the flight case that is pretty interesting. All right, there we are. This is a Sony uh, LCD monitor. It's an early Sony LCD monitor. It's actually a professional monitor. Um, it isn't a consumer grade product. It's a a professional grade product and um, this was actually quite expensive back in the day these cost about 750 us dollars when they were new but um what this was used for was on some kind of film production uh to you know watch what they had filmed or to you know uh well actually i don't even know what they uh, used it for whatever but they it was obviously designed to be easily stackable and easily transportable that's why they installed it in this flight case um, and it's quite well padded, of course, as well, and protected from impacts and stuff, which is really great. But the reason why I'm interested in this monitor is because it's actually a NTSC and a PAL monitor. So uh, here in South Africa, we're a PAL country, and that means finding NTSC monitors can be pretty tricky. Um, I'm sure, depending on where you are in the world, you might have a similar problem um, you know, like if you're in an NTSC country like North America, for example, then you might struggle to find a PAL monitor. But what's really nice about this is that it can do both. So you can use this with all of your old sort of retro um, microcomputers and and all sort you know all kinds of things like that. Uh, what's also very nice about this monitor is that it can take a lot of different inputs. It's got composite, it's got RGB, it's got S video. Um, so you can pretty much hook up anything to this, uh, which is very, very useful again for all kinds of retro gaming. Now, uh, this is from 2006, this monitor. Um, the response time uh, of the actual LCD panel is a bit slow, uh, so you can't really play anything very fast paced on this. It gets um, it has quite a lot of image retention issues when you do that, apparently. but. Um, that's perfectly fine because I don't intend to really do stuff like that. I, I'm, you know, I'm basically just going to use this as a stand-in or a replacement for a, an old CRT TV. 
Um, you know, so I can hook up by Commodore 64, my Atari uh, or whatever to this. I can hook up everything to it basically. So it's, yeah, it's it's um, really nice. This max resolution is, a, is only 640 by 480, which by modern standards is completely rubbish. But again, it doesn't matter because for what we want to use it for, which is uh, retro gaming, then that's actually a very nice resolution. So yeah, really happy to finally get hold of this. Okay, and for the next box, we have something that looks like a computer tower, and that's because it is a computer tower. Oh. More specifically, oh dear, all right, that's looking a little bit uh, dirty, it certainly is a clean, but it is a compact Presario. Yes, PC, there we are. That's quite funky, a nice uh, late 1990s design there, or probably early 2000s. I think, yeah, that thing opens. It's got a Windows Millennium Edition ME key there, that's quite cool. Uh, got some specs here, what have we got? Uh, AMD Duron 700, it's not that bad actually, you can do quite a lot with that. Uh, 64 megabytes of RAM. A 10 gig hard drive and a 56k modem, nice, which I think it, it does still have that, brilliant. Alright, so uh, yeah, I'll open this up later and have a look at what's inside it, but I think it's a pretty nice uh, machine. It can certainly be a good candidate for a, a rebuild video at some point in the future. And then to go along with that uh, compact Rosario, we have the monitor in this monitor box. So there we go, that's quite a nice monitor. Uh, it's 15 inch, I think. I think it certainly looks the part because it matches this computer, that's very nice. Um, it has got some little chips apparently on the screen, unfortunately. Uh, actual, actual sort of uh, chips in the glass, which is rather unfortunate. Um, I don't think that's economical to repair. Uh, it's, these monitors certainly aren't worth anything. Um, especially not in terms of money, so there's not much point in spending a lot of money on repairing a monitor like this. But um, if there is any, anybody watching who has a windscreen repair company or something similar and they would like to repair this for me, then by all means leave a comment in the comments below and hopefully uh, if the price is right we can have this repaired, but uh, otherwise I think it's just something that I'm going to have to live with. So I don't actually know if this machine works at all, so let's just uh, power it up. This is the first time I'm powering it up, so we're going to try and just see what happens. It's a good noise. That's not a good noise. Ah. Okay. No, wait, we have something. Ah, the CD-ROM is uh, not so healthy. What is that weird noise? Mm. But yeah, but despite the uh, oh wow, operating system not found on any devices. Okay, it seems to be working. It just doesn't have an operating system, so we can fix that. And there we go. That's pretty much the end of this first unboxing video on this channel. And I would just like to send a massive shout out again to John for sending me all this great stuff. Uh, there's some really really nice things in this batch of uh, retro computer goodies. So uh, Thanks again to John and Thanks to everyone for watching as well um, If you like this unboxing idea, then let me know Maybe we can do more of this sort of thing in the future or if you'd like to see a review on any particular product in this batch Then let me know as well, but uh, that's pretty much it for this video guys. So until next time. Cheers